A live coding session. Code Buddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer to peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. In today's virtual hangout, we're going to continue with this project for Western Friends where we are migrating a website from Drupal CMS to Wagtail CMS. We've been doing this for about a year porting over the features is uh, not a simple like overnight uh, process um, particularly when a site can have many features and sections uh, you have to kind of custom build but we're getting close to uh, having our migration uh, at least ready to bring in some data to test the features a little bit more thoroughly uh, and hopefully we'll be able to launch in the next month or two so hard to estimate. Today what I need to work on is m migrating this magazine data over. Western Friend is primarily a publication, print and online, as well as a community website. And since the magazine is so central to the um, community um, and has gone, has been published for so long, has been, it goes back many years to 1929, um, we're starting here with the data export, my data migration. So, so far, here are our migration commands for issues, and now I'm going to be starting to migrate the article content. I've prepared an export from the Drupal website, and we'll write um, a function similar to this to import those issues and link them to, uh, import those articles and link them to issues. So here are the most recent issues. And issues consist of articles. And each article has one or more authors. And is categorized linked to an issue and then has some article content and subscribers can view the full content of the most recent three issues all articles in those while the older issues going back to 1929 are just fully publicly available to anyone anonymous users and uh, a good uh, portion of those are published on the internet archive So one of the sort of design decisions with the trade-off that we made um, was on magazine ish, uh, excuse me, magazine articles to use a Drupal taxonomy of one text field, one word basically, for each article, uh, each author, excuse me. And that taxonomy then can be used to display all of that author's content The problem being, on our new site, and in general, we would like to have authors given name and family name as separate fields. And we kind of knew this at the time we were going to, we were deliberating about how to categorize articles by authors so that we could populate these pages. Um, and sort of just due to limitations of the Drupal uh, user interface about inline entities because authors are a separate entity from an article. Um, in this case, we settled on the single uh, text field and we, and we knew it was going to be difficult and create some debt down the road. So today, I'm just going to try to clean this up and what I'm going to do is create a list of all the authors for the, um, the first step today. And this might be the only thing we really get through during this live coding session. Um, but I'm going to create a list of all the authors and we're going to use Python to just um, parse all those author strings, and break them into arrays, break them into lists that is, and um, separate out the lists into two columns and export to a CSV to, in other words, separate out the first name and given name. And uh, the trick will be uh, that not everybody has just two parts in their name. And we'll see that pretty soon, but I might be able to give an example here. Um, well, 
That's it. This is a hyphenated last name, so that probably won't be an issue. Ah, here's a good one. Anita Hemphill McCormick and Donald W. McCormick for that matter. Uh, we're not sort of distinguishing between middle initials. So my naive idea, and I'm gonna run this, uh, I've actually discussed this with Mary, and we're gonna spot check these uh, for, I'll show you an edge case here, um, would be to separate out the last name as being the last uh, chunk of the string after any number of spaces. So everything before that space character will be considered the first name. And I think we can do that with just basic Python um, string concatenation and, uh, and uh, list operations, list indexing, so slicing. Now the other case, I think there will be some examples where we have an organization that has multiple words in their name and the organizations also publish in the magazine so we will just probably clean these up by hand i'm not going to try to make the code too complicated and i don't even know what kind of you know code i would write so mary and i agreed to try to get as far as possible with just the automated approach and then we'll do just a little bit of you know manual work to clean stuff up all right so without further ado, let's, and with those, with those tasks in mind, let's see how far we get today. We'll go ahead and log into the site. There we go. And we're gonna just create an export, a CSV export of all the authors and I have to figure out how to handle multi multi author fields. I think I can actually just export the taxonomy. So let's let's double check this. <clears throat> if I go to the content types and magazine article and we check out the fields in Drupal. The authors field is a term reference and it links to a taxonomy vocabulary called article author. So I think I can just export this taxonomy to be honest without any kind of uh, jumping around uh, to parse all the articles and get the authors and then check for uniqueness. Uh, so I'll create a view. I'm either going to create a view as its own top level thing, or I've got this, I'm kind of trying to group all my export related views under one section, but it can be dangerous because sometimes you'll apply a change to one and inadvertently apply it to all, and that could um, break things. <laughs> Let's go ahead and give it a try though. Uh, firstly though, let me make sure I can filter by content type here. And maybe that's not what I'm trying to do then. Well, well is there a filter by taxonomy? I'm not gonna save this change, I'm just gonna take a look. I think I just need a uh, top level view for this, that's okay. Yeah, taxonomy terms, so this will be the um, I'll put export in front of it. Be pretty explicit about it. Whoops. Okay. All right, let me get a little bit of tea before we get too far into the coding part here. <laughs> Got my favorite, Oatly. <laughs> it's not paid endorsement. E-Cafe. I don't know if they have this in other places.
It's like a coffee creamer, but made from oats. Goes good with black tea. Okay, so one cool thing about Drupal, and it's also um, one of the major difficulties of Drupal is a lot, you can do so much through the user interface. It's really cool, but it's also, then things get really, the user interface gets really complicated and things get hard to track. Um, and changes over time are difficult, if not impossible to track. It's hard to figure out how you did stuff. <laughs> because it can be nestled between different pages and different like sections of the administrative site. It's really kind of tangly. So what we want to do here is use this powerful uh, Drupal views, which became part of Drupal core. And I almost think that uh, it'd be cool if Wagtail could have something like this, but that behind it, it would generate code that could be checked into version control or something, revision control. And we want to export, data export, there we are. And you can see here we can do these changes in all displays, which are all um, which is okay for right now because I only have this one display. But you could have multiple displays, multiple exports, multiple views or pages, blocks. It's really powerful, and pretty cool. All right, so we're going to export to a CSV file. Um, it doesn't come with JSON out of the box, and I was kind of hoping to use JSON for parsing things more. Uh, I was having some difficulties with embedded HTML in the CSS and quoted strings and stuff, um, breaking the CSV. I think I've gotten over those problems. Um, what was the deal with XLS? I can't remember. Something not quite working out with XLS. Anyway, JSON would have been a little cleaner. Uh, but we'll be using CSV today, and we're going to check the settings here. We will call them headers so that when we pull it into We don't need the column headers. So we're getting an error display data export uses a path, but not a specified. It means I have to first check the permissions. And the permission would be, well, actually I want it to be a role. See how it defaults to all displays? It's pretty precarious. Uh, da, 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 administrator. I think this is, I think it's something like that. Could be hyphenated, doesn't really matter so much. And then we get the list. Some interesting items. Some interesting yeah, items in there. And sometimes even article titles. <laughs> Single word ones. All right, so we'll just dis uh, disable pagination.
Looks like it's by default sorting alphabetically. Special characters, numbers, or alphanumerically, I guess I should say. All right. Grab the export data. I'm going to save it into the data directory of our project over here. We can take a quick look at it. Ooh, it's a lot, and we didn't want to clean these all up by hand, so. I'm wondering if I, I probably don't need to uh, quote the values. Since each of them is their own row. So yeah, a lot of people have contributed there. Kind of confusing how they ended up with so many sort of article titles or something. And well, this is a, a a group of people. But uh, yeah, I guess just chalk up the user error. Uh, here's an example with a little bit of white space, double spaces in between. It might cause some difficulty. I'll have to think about it. I'll have to look. Happens a few times. I could almost create a page on the Drupal site so we could click these and see what articles are associated with those authors or if they can be deleted. Mary, uh, Mary might agree to that. Nothing really major stands out. These hyphenated ones should be all right because I'm just going to kind of explode or split the uh, strings by spaces using the string split method. I think that'll be all right. Into lists and then process those lists by grabbing the, the last item. I'll figure it out uh, slowly. It'll be a little bit of trial and error. So I guess we can just start with that now. The thing is, I'll try to use, ooh, here's three spaces, nice. And it's almost like last name came, oh man. <laughs> I'm guessing, maybe I'm wrong, no, I don't know. In some cases, the last name might have been entered first and then for first name last, which is just something I can't clean up here. And then we got sometimes mixed capitalization, which also might be intentional. Okay, so um, what we're gonna be doing is just Googling, stack overflowing, and working in a Python REPL, probably, to work things out. Save it to a script that I can reproduce the 
steps and then drop it in Google Sheets or actually we're using Nextcloud, that might be fine. Uh, we just, there's right now a bug with uh, Nextcloud with Collabora Online that if you hit the backspace key, it like, not sure what happens, but the whole document, you can't edit it anymore, the whole spreadsheet, and then you can't reopen it. So that's a pretty, that's a showstopper bug, uh, which is unfortunate. We were really trying to find alternatives to Google Sheets and the Collabora Online is good. It's really promising alternative, but when you have a bug that significant that causes data loss, and I don't know how the urgency, if they're gonna fix it soon, and I don't really know where to begin to fix it. I have other tasks, but we did report it. So in any case, just for better or for worse reason, Google Sheets, which is good tool also. Well, let's see. So I'll open the Python REPL here. Um, I think we should just be able to uh, use the Python CSV library, open the file, iterate over it. Well, I'll actually just start a Python file here. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay, sorry. Just gotta get my thoughts organized a little bit. Um, I think when we're gonna migrate this data, I'm gonna be just pulling it straight over the network from Drupal, because this migration needs to be able to run in a remote computer, and I don't wanna have to just download and upload a bunch of CSV files, so we'll probably pull it straight from the web over by an HTTP request, um, parse it in place. So that said, I can just work locally in this directory with a new file. Authors pars just so it's kind of with the authors or authors parser. And this won't go into um, revision control at this point. Hello, there it goes. And I always have to look up basic things, so there's no shame in the game, but I think it's gonna be OS. How do you open a file in Python, right? Yeah, you don't even have to do that. Good. Yeah, and we'll get into this level where I'm actually gonna make a Django command later. First, I'm just gonna work with the, the raw data here. Just do something. D 
doesn't need to be a dictionary reader. Uh, let me just double check here. Probably a different That's cool. I don't know if that worked last time I tried it. That's pretty clean. See if this works. What do we call it? Arthur, Arthur's Parth. It worked. Okay. Oh, right. It's strange. So each of them is a list. It's okay. Yeah. Because it's assuming that each uh, row could have multiple entries, that makes sense. I'm not going to fight it too much. It just means that I'll grab the zero with one from each uh, each row, right? Excellent. All right, now that we have the author, we'll do a string split. All right. <clears throat> In the case of this, it'll have a bunch of items that I'll have to concat back together. So what's the opposite of splitting? If you have a list of items, you can join. I think I... Didn't write Java, <laughs> Java, sorry, JavaScript, or you think I didn't write Python in my day job? Well, varying degrees of proficiency. Yeah, so I just rejoin it, essentially string.join, pop the list into that, pretty clean. So the list will be the... I guess I'll have to pop it, pop the... Okay, so here are the steps. Split the list, I mean, split the string, uh, author's name on space, character. Pop the last item of the list as family name? Oh, this is another th issue, but yeah, we'll have to separate it out the organizations. We'll work it out, we'll work it out, because organizations don't have a family name, they're just organization name. Okay, cool, so. Pop the last item of the list as family name, then join the remaining items in the list as the, the pop value um, with spaces, so back and forth. <laughs> I think it'll work. So, 
Space, do you need to actually put a some sort of a signifier there? Um, to say this is no, I don't think no. Then we're just gonna say given name equals. I'm gonna have to write this to CSV. I'm just trying to think a little bit down the road because I'm not writing this directly to the database right now. I wanted to put it, I want to put it on the Google Docs, so anyway. We'll need dictionaries or something. We'll figure it out. Given name equals uh, author split dot pop. Nice. It makes me want to do the mouth pop, but I won't do it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. This is family name. Yeah, we thought should we use first name last name because it's pretty simple but we use schema.org for our data schema so I'm trying to be consistent there family name and given name is your first names it's still I think that's more universal it's not so American centric America centric or westernized but I'm not sure how Asian names follow fall into those patterns either so the given name will be a space character joining the remaining author split and this should be that's what I'm kind of worried about mutating the data Uh, and then how do I spot check this? Well, debugger, I guess I could. It's interesting. I wonder what context this is running in there. Yeah, because it worked before. It doesn't work in the debugger. Hmm. Just to the local file system. Hmm. Maybe I need. Well, essentially, I'm just going to put a bunch of dictionaries in the list right now. So let's just.
get it. It ran it from the project root. That makes sense. So yeah, I couldn't find the local directory, uh, local file because it was in a subdirectory. All right. Well. The Python context was from the project root, I guess. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll create a dictionary of each of those, um, pop it, uh, <laughs> append it to a list. And use the CSV library to write unlisted dictionary. Right? I wonder if there's a dict writer, because if I have a, yeah, there is, so there we go. My friend Marcus is going to frown that I'm using a generator or something, I think. But whatever. <laughs> and I don't know the trade-offs between using a dictionary literal versus the dict method. Should probably actually read. Ah, oh, dang. I'm not gonna use pandas, although pandas is nice, does a lot of things really quickly and efficiently.
Field name is not optional, so it's not going for the field names. I have to. All right. Manually code those. Hmm. Actually, I can just. Hmm. Let me think here for a second. Nope. Can't. I don't think I can do it inside this loop because it's. Uh, no. Well. Actually, I probably could. It's getting a little tangly, though. Hmm. iterate over these. <sighs> yeah, it's cleaner that way. I'm trying to get all fun, fancy or something. I don't know what I'm just thinking, but uh, let's see if this works. All right, so then we'll get a little CSV. I wonder if I need a new line character, what the default new line would be. Why would they use an empty new line? Do what the example says and not second guess it. This file must have a write method, I think, is what, what I'm doing wrong here. Python, 
parsed Arthas. Okay, yes. Still, I didn't fix my typo from earlier. All right, got it. Now we're good. Yeah, very cool. Arthur's parsed. Mm. Yes. Yes, indeedly doodly. Yes, indeedly doodly. Okay. Very cool. I think I'm going to call it a uh, light night and just, this is good progress. I'll give Mary a little bit of time to respond. We'll figure out how we're going to go forward with these authors. I'll tie it back together. Yeah, because we need these authors in order to import the data all in one hop anyway. Uh, we'll tie it all back together in the next session on. Uh, importing issues, then probably the whole authors bucket needs to be created. So I'll import all the authors and then import the articles, which will reference authors and issues. Boom. That'd be good. All right. So essentially, my author's parser just needs to do this for the whole set, the whole shebang. And author's parsed. Looks good. I wonder if I should quote. Strings probably doesn't matter. night in the chat brief and successful coding session I suppose I can look a little bit more So if I say csv.quote all equals true. What happens? Let me just try that one little improvement. there what how to apply that defines the following constants oh I can use that constant but how dialectic cell CSP format params
Well, maybe less is more. This is a little bit confusing. Examples go a long way, man. Uh, okay. Actually, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Save so much time just having an example there. Right, so this is in the reader. Oh, put the apply in the writer. It's a little safer. I wish almost the dictator writer documentation would show me those. Perhaps maybe it does. How do we get to that? How do we open that doc? No, that's not it. Control space. But this is everything in my uh, environment almost. No. No. Put a new blank line. How do we? Damn. Excuse me. Shift space. All right. Command shift space. Com control shift space in my case. Maybe there isn't one. Control shift space. Well, yeah, look at that. Just hovering does it. So perhaps it's not getting any documentation. Hmm. Go to definition. Yeah, there's no... Hmm. Field names are fine. There we go, argument. Oh, okay, it's nested in there. Optional keyword arguments. This does out. I'm not going to worry about this too much. Looks like we got good progress made. It's just at the top of the hour. It's always good to dig a little bit deeper and maybe push a little further if possible. If you're not burned out or you're not too fatigued after the at this session. And uh, Python documentation is pretty dang good. It's got doc, uh, good references, uh, examples. In some cases, Stack Overflow is all always. Um, my first go-to because you just basically jump straight to the example. Okay, well, thanks for hanging out. This has been another live
coding session for CodeBuddies.org community. If you're interested in taking part in the CodeBuddies community, stop by CodeBuddies.org. There's a lot of other groups of people working in different technologies, data science, you've got Java, PHP, you name it. There's something for everybody there. If you're interested in learning Python and or React or contributing to an active open source project with either or both of those technologies, go to github.com slash codebuddies. Check out the new backend project for uh, Django rewrite of the codebuddies.org platform. And there's also going to be a React front end, which is under development as well. There's a lot of opportunity for beginners and people familiar with both of those technologies to contribute. We are trying to make the development process very easy to get started. So again, come on by Code Buddies and we'll see you around. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.